to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and the garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Okay, so uh, if you be beat up, if you're mourning, if you be ruined in church, happens a lot. Whoa, well, then you can rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the long places and devastated. And um, I felt so humbled, really, when um, I felt God say this. It's probably said in other church as well, but said this about this church. And I want, if you're in this church, I want you to have a sense of God's call. Okay, He's looking for a people who will. Who will say yes, Lord? Who will say, yeah, I'm being humble. But you can heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Heal my heart. Stuff that's been spoken of will break it off. I say yes, Lord, to your call in this church. Yes, to your call in this church. We will, as a body, we will take it on and we will rebuild the ruined cities, Lord. They're going to come and hug me. And you're like, <laughs> but we are going to come and say hi. So we have the 60 second countdown Graham is going to give us. And uh, go on, church, Crown family, go and welcome all those visitors. Um, and if they go like this to you, don't hug them. Go for it. <laughs>
take our seats. If you're visiting us for the first time or you haven't been in church for a while and you're back, you are most welcome. Good to see you. You are really welcome amongst us. Uh, my name is Steve. It's my great privilege to be the, the pastor of this church and it is my first time back preaching today for a while, which is great. So in a few minutes I'm going to be doing that, but before then it is time to give to the Lord. Amen. And we get excited about giving in Crown Family Church. You know, this church, for a church of 50, 60 people, something like that, you are probably the most generous bunch of people that I have ever seen. You know, last week there was an offering that was received for over £12,000 for the future building that God is going to give us. But last month there was an offering raised for over £14,000 to go to Ukraine. You know, God is just doing one thing after the next, after the next. And the reason that we place such an emphasis over the power of giving is because I want you to realise that we don't want or need your money. Amen. God doesn't need your money. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He is in control of everything. But he provides seed to sowers. Did you hear me? He will provide seed to those people who are sowers and bread to those who are eaters. Amen. How many eaters have we got? Amen. Seed to sowers, bread to eaters. And so as we come to this time of giving, it is our opportunity to partner with God, to give back into his purposes, to give back into what he wants to do, both here in this locality and beyond. Amen. And so God wants us as a church to get into gear in the whole area of sowing and reaping. And you might say, well, Steve, I've got a bit of lack at the moment. Let me tell you a quick story that is a story from this week. And uh, two weeks ago, Maria and I were, we, as many of you know, I've had this surgery, so it's kind of like my first week coming back to preach. And you know, I've been around, but not really standing up or doing other things. And we have not done any sales pipeline building in our business. So most of you know that I have a company downstairs on level one. And uh, that business has not had me doing any sales for the last 10 weeks. And so we have been saying, God, what are we going to do? We've got no sales coming in in the run-up to the summer. And summer's always a time where things go a little bit rocky and then September comes, it picks up again, it's all fine. So we were just saying, God, we need a breakthrough. And for those of you who remember, we had the Faith Evangelistic Ministries Conference just two weekends ago, and I was there ministering with um, Teresa Warumi, who's my spiritual mum in Kenya, and I was there going to support her, and some of you guys came along, that was great. And in that meeting, I just said, God, I've got to sow a seed, because if you're going to do something in my life, I need to return to you what is yours, first and foremost. But I know that if I sow, your word promises me that I will reap a harvest on that which I give. And I can partake in the grace on another through the power of a seed. Isn't that amazing? That God gives you the ability, the, the, the sense of purpose that as you can bless someone, as you can sow into their life, that you will partake in the grace on that person. Yeah. But what does that mean? Well, the inheritance that that individual has that you sowed into, it means you will receive a portion of that. Hallelujah. And I know in this church that we are a nation's church. Amen. We are ascending church. And so we believe in the power of sowing because as we sow, not only will we see God's kingdom come here in this locality, but from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth, from Wallington to London to the south of England, to the UK, and across the whole world. Hallelujah. And you know, it's interesting that it was Samaria as well, because it was even the places that were cross-cultural. Okay, let's, let's say a bit like this, maybe. To Wallington. To Banstead. <laughs> to Clapham. <laughs> Battersea. Wimbledon, wherever it is that you're from across culture. I mean, God has made us into the a church of different backgrounds, different cultures, yeah. different nations gathered together. We'll talk more about that later. But as we come to the offering, I want us to prepare our gift this morning. Not because we've come to tip God, not because we want to just sow something because I've said that you need to give, but because we want to return to him that which he's already given to us. And as we do so today, I'm going to pray that God will open 
the storehouses of heaven, the windows of heaven over your life and will bless you. And the word of God is so clear. If there is anyone here today who for whatever reason can't give, he will supply seed to the sower. Amen. Seed to the sower. Amen. Amen. So can I ask you to grab your envelope? If it's stuck down, that means it's had someone's bottom on it before and it's just sealed to the uh, to the envelope. So f- feel free to undo it. You know, you can undo it. In there, there's the ability to give. You still use a checkbook. You can write that out to Crown Global. If you want to do one of those online transfer things, people at home, you can give uh, via the stream at home. The account details are 378 23988, that's 378 23988, sort code 090127. And also, you can give using a debit or credit card. Please don't give in debt, but give to the Lord, and you can do that here. So, we're going to package our uh, offering. Let's just prepare for a moment, my darling. You didn't finish the story. I didn't finish the story. I didn't even start the story. Thank you very much. Went for the conference. Thank you. This is great. The whole point of why I tell you the story, we went to the conference and we gave a seed. And in the business, thank you, Dominic. That's why she's here. So we, we were just, uh, we were sowing this seed and we gave this, this money into, into the ministry there. And, you know, it, it was fine. We just did it. But the day after, Monday morning, I got into the office and I got calls started coming in from people who I had not even heard of in years. And they said, Steve, we need you to start working tomorrow. I said, what do you mean tomorrow? <laughs> well, we need it right now. And in the space of one day, three contracts that were worth probably £10,000 a month came in as a result of the power of this. So, the word of God says to test him in this. You know, so test him. Let's, let's believe God. So package your envelope. If you're giving cash, make sure you give on gift aid. If you're a UK taxpayer, we can claim the money back. Let's just grab our envelope, lift it up, and let's just pray as we prepare ourselves to give. Father, we thank you that you're a good father. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us so incredibly. Lord, we just ask today that as we come to your table, as we come to your word, Father, we don't want to be those that idly come without an offering, without something to give back to you. So, Lord, we respond in our spirits, in our faith to you, knowing that you are in control. And so, Father, whatever the offering is for today, if it's for salvation, we declare salvation. Father, if it's for healing, we declare healing. Lord, if it's for breakthrough, we declare breakthrough. Father, over every home, over every giver, both at home online and also here in this place in the upper room, Father, would you open the storehouses of heaven over each and every one in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Can those with buckets under their seats please help us as we package that gift and the tea. Thank you. So for those of you that are visitors, just to let you know, I'm sure you have felt the welcome when people came to say hi to you, but we're... uh, our name is Crown Family Church, um, and we build the family by having relationships with one another. And every month we do something to build that relationship. So this month, the ladies, um, I mean the August month, not the July month, we've already done that one. Uh, the ladies are having a boat trip. And uh, sorry for you if you did not book, because it is now full. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so, but we will have another one because it's really been quite a good event. But for the guys, um, they're going to have a crazy golf day. <laughs> yes. So where's Lawrence gone? Oh, he's right in front of So the, cra- the crazy golf day is on Saturday, the 20th of August. And I see Daryl's not here today. So if you're interested in the crazy golf day, it's Chris. Chris. Oh, go and see Chris. Not, not, not. Oh, and you too. So they can come and see you too. I know nothing. <laughs> so whichever one knows nothing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and so we're so happy to have you back, Steve. Yay! So can you all just reach your hands towards Steve and let's just pray for him. Yeah. Father, we just thank you for the heart of this man. Lord, we thank you that you have been in his mind, you have been in his heart, and you will rest upon his lips today as he shares your word with us. 
And Father, I pray that every person will open their hearts and open their minds. And how amazing you are, Holy Spirit, that as Steve speaks, you say, Holy Spirit, to each one of us, whatever we need to hear. Thank you, Lord, that you rest upon Steve. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Before we get into that, we've got some visitors amongst us this morning who I would love to greet you um, because they are key people in the kingdom of God and they are also dear friends. Uh, firstly, we have uh, Jacob and Charlotta, Jacob and Charlotte. Come on, stand up and make your family. Why don't you come out here, guys, and just come and just greet the church? So these guys are the youth pastors at KBC in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, um, and they're just with us for the week. So, uh, and he is an amazing worship leader and all sorts of other things. And their beautiful family who've been staying with us the last few days. So, why don't you just say hi to people and do whatever you feel is on your heart? Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Hi. It's a privilege to be here and meet you all. We have such, such a lovely church. We have just really enjoyed the last couple of days being here together with Steve and, and Maria as well. And yeah, it's just. It has been amazing, and now finally to be here with you after we have had Steve at our place many, many times, and it's it's so lovely to finally see all of you and see your church and everything you're doing. It's amazing. Yeah, do you want to say hi Yeah. No. Yeah, we're really privileged to be here. It's such an honor, and uh, it's such a warm church you have here, and uh, amazing to finally be here so we drove all the way from Copenhagen wow. just to meet you guys thank you so much yeah and then we're really looking forward to see all the good things that God is going to do in this place as well yeah. and I really believe that the time that you're going into as well is going to be just the, the plan and the road that God has just made for you Amen. so every step we're just going to you know prepare and just every door will be open for you and next coming time is just going to be amazing for you. I really believe that yeah, in the depth of my heart. Yeah. You're going to see some wonderful and just miraculous things yeah. going yeah. on yeah. in the next coming yeah. season. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Come on, give them a warm welcome. Thank you so much. And uh, you know, we also have some dear friends with us who are dear, dear friends. And I'm not going to ask you to preach now. You do know that. <laughs> dangerous, dangerous. But we have uh, um, some friends of ours who have been exploring um, what it means to be more closely connected into us. And we love them to pieces. You would have remembered Bruce and Sharon Oliver from the gathering where they've been before, uh, ministered amongst us. They travel the nations. Now, itinerantly and have planted many churches, see God do amazing things. You guys, would you just come and take your liberty just for a few minutes? Woo! Well, good morning, church. Hi, Sharon. Do you know, it's really wonderful to be here. Last Sunday, we were not in church, and it was just weird. I just felt a bit kind of uncomfortable, and I just wanted to be in church. But because we travel a lot, we are hardly ever here in the UK, so we've come back for the summer. But the church that we had been attending, for various reasons, um, we've, we've come away from that. And it's like, so we have the opportunity to visit anywhere. And I was thinking, where do I want to go? I, thought, I want somewhere that I know we have the same DNA. And I thought, I know, I said to Bruce, let's go here. Yeah. So here we are today. Wow. We just yeah. wanted to come yeah. and be with family. Yeah. You know, we, we have the great privilege of ministering in many, many different churches. And some churches are great, some churches are not. <laughs> and, uh, and everybody's got something that's good. Um, you know, some expression of the heart of God. But not everywhere feels like home. But as soon as I stepped in here this morning, it felt like home. Amen. And we've already seen you on your, your, your gathering nights, but not in church. And uh, it's just a wonderful place to be. I feel that same DNA. In fact, as Steve was talking about being a, um, being a, a global church, you know, a church for the nations. We pastored in the UK for 17 years. Mm. And we were a church, we were a sending church. 
and we were a church for the nations. In fact, I think our church was mainly a big mission team. I think everybody in the church went on mission at some time or another, didn't they? And uh, it's really great to see you seeing the same thing, asking of God for the same things that we felt he laid on our hearts all those years ago. So to come and be with you today is a real privilege. And so we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, uh, friends bring gifts, <laughs> and uh, it was amazing. Um, we were with you, I think, Friday about two weeks ago, and there was a word about this sending going to the nations. I don't quite know how it all connected together, but somebody said something about we need to demonstrate or show that in the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I've just brought with me about 20 or 30 flags of the nations, which was extraordinary. The day we were after, we were with you on the Friday. I had a call from the girl we passed that uh, handed our old church over to, and she said, Bruce, what would you like to do with these? These are yours. And so we had collected flags of almost all of the nations that we had ministered in and also the people who had visited our church. And so we've got these places all over South America, different parts of Europe, and uh, I think there might even be Denmark in there, but <laughs> everything is in there, Mozambique, the countries that you work in, Kenya, Uganda, and so they're a blessing. So you can do whatever you like with them. And uh, they didn't know what to do with them. And I said, yes, I'll have them. And I sent a message to Steve, I said, Got some flags, do you want them? Yes, now. Yes. Uh, that's just great. So for those who don't know us, we are Bruce and Sharon Oliver, and uh, we minister under a name called Mango International. You can find me on you know, the, the website and so on. But we minister, we live between here and Dubai, and we are primarily working in East Africa, in Kenya and Uganda, and in West Africa, in Nigeria, and then into India and Pakistan and Nepal. And historically, we've had a long relationship with Russia and Ukraine, and obviously that's not so easy now, but what's fascinating, you know the town of Kherson. Mm -hmm. Kherson has got a massive charismatic church of about 3,000 people, yeah. and we were some of the last people to actually minister there before everything has just gone pear-shaped. So many of the places, I was the last one to have been in there before the tanks came in. And so this was like three years ago before COVID hit and we've not been able to travel. So many of our friends have literally had to run for their lives. So we've got quite a handle on what's happening in Ukraine at the moment. Also, we're well connected in with Russia as we've been visiting there for several years into Siberia and uh, one of our friends is the head of the Evangelical and Charismatic Churches of the whole of Russia wow. and they're based in Perm in Siberia where they build the same missile and the extreme difficulty of seeing all of that so just the quick story because there's always one <laughs> we just walked into an open door in the Russian speaking church in Dubai just two wow. weeks ago and the power of God dropped on them mm -hmm. and we had people from Belarus, Russia, Ukraine, Armenia and Kyrgyzstan down under the power going through a visitation and the door was opened up to ministers to the Russian speakers in Dubai. Wow. So it's just extraordinary what you could never even organize god just did it yeah. and he was there and steve just said to me i'll give you the mic i was in a big church in dubai there are about 500 people there and it was in a five-star ballroom carpeted <laughs> but the pastor stood up i knew two people in the church the pastor stood up and I was quietly praying with my eyes closed, as you do in church, <laughs> thinking, you know, the kind of, oh God, you know, just this is great, I'm here. And then the pastor just said, I've had a word and I don't believe I should preach this morning. And then he said, this person, this, I'd only met him on the Friday. And this person just turned and he said, 
and he doesn't know it's coming. <laughs> but Bruce, will you take the service? And I was given a service of 500 people and the power of God dropped in that Amen. place. So something extraordinary has happened just over the last few weeks. And one of the guys I prayed for was the pastor of the Russian speaking church and he said we need this in our church so mm. just before we left Dubai we ministered I threw a few hand grenades in and we literally <laughs> came back here so it's just great to be with you there is some all I can say is there is something unusual of a powerful nature has just kicked off within the last three to four weeks mm. we've been two weeks in Kenya and we began to see what we had seen back in the early 90s. It was extraordinary. Because there we had sovereign visitations, over thousands of people, and it was just awesome. Nobody had ever seen anything like it before. The power was so intense that people had to be carried home. And this was before Toronto and all of that. And so something is happening because we've now seen it in Kenya, and in the two big churches in Dubai, mm. all within the last few weeks. Mm. So I am anticipating, mm. and that's why we want to connect with you and just say, come on, guys, yeah. we're on the same page yeah. when yeah. we want to see it here. Yeah. So God bless yeah. you and thank you for receiving us. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you're here by the power of your spirit this yeah. morning. Lord, when two or three gather in your name, you're there in the midst. And Lord, we welcome you as God of revival in our midst. Father, we thank you that you are in the business of shaking us, of setting us on fire again, Lord. Uh, Father, right now, this morning, as your word comes, Father, I invite you to come and minister through the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, to stir and blow on the embers of our hearts. Lord, for whatever you want to do, however you want to move in this place today, Father, we desire to be a people of your presence. Father, we desire to be a people of your glory. Father, that are on the mission of Jesus. Father, we want nothing missing, nothing to be broken broken, yes. just us to be in the right place at the right time, yes. being restored into the fullness of all that you have for amen. us. We ask this this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. amen. Well, it is so, so good to be back and preaching for Crown Family Church. Woo! Back home. Isn't it great? You know, sometimes when you have time out, I, I make a habit of only preaching here once a month anyway. And the reason for that is because either you get bored or you become accustomed to the style that I preach and then you just wouldn't get it when I come. But also, more importantly, the fact is we've got Dave, we've got Tony, we've got Chris, we've got all of these other amazing people who really can do a much better job than I can. So it's good to give opportunity to all of these people. But when you come back from a time out, you know, you have to know that you know that God has spoken to you. Amen. And God is a God who is constantly speaking. He is in the business of speaking because if we served a God that did not speak, then we would not be serving a living creator. Yeah. He's constantly speaking. And when his word comes forth, his word is changing. It's transformative yes. in nature. Yeah. When the word of God comes forth, things happen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And we've looked at this before. As God's word is spoken, the breath of God, the ruach of God comes and what isn't suddenly comes. Comes into being. The whole of creation was born and spoken through the power of a word. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so as we believe and we trust his word, we know that his word is now living and active within us. Yeah. Christ Jesus who became the word made flesh and Jesus who is now within us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. That means if his word is within us, then it's for us to stand. It's for us to declare. It's for us to speak yeah, yeah. by your nature as a son and daughter of the Most High. His yeah. word is within you. Amen. Woo! And if his word is within you, when you speak, miracles happen. When you speak, things happen. When you speak, lives are changed. And the moment that you and I get this in our hearts and in our spirits, we realize that we're not just going about our day to day, but we are responding in faith to what the Lord wants to say. Now, I heard someone say to me this this week. They said, well, Steve, it's great because... You know, on Sundays I can come to church, but the rest of the time I've got to work. 
And I began thinking about this, thinking, what does this person mean I've got to work? I'm a person who believes in work. You know, I don't uh, travel about eight weeks a year, but the rest of the time, Monday to Friday, I'm at work and I believe in work. And if you are, um, you know, if you're someone who wants to be a provider for your family, then you need to work. That's the reality of it. Because when you work, you get money and money is good. Mm. <laughs> money gives you the power to do stuff yeah. in the world. Amen. And you know, God is a God of work. And I would begin to just look at this in the scriptures in Philippians 2.13. This isn't my message. This is kind of just like a pre-thought. The Philippians 2.13 says, It is for God who is at work in you. Say, in you. Yeah. He's working in you both to do the will and the work for his good pleasure. And you know, not just God the Father, but Jesus the Son is also at work. John 5, Jesus said to them, My Father is always at work to this very day, and I too am working. Interesting, isn't it? In John 5, 19, Jesus responds to them and says, Very truly, I tell you, whenever we hear that, we know that means there's extra emphasis. Very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He only does what he sees the Father doing. Amen. So God is at work. Jesus, the son is at work. But guess what? God, the Holy Spirit is also at work. And where is he at work? Well, he's at work within you. And he's at work within me to do his great pleasure and his will. And that means when you and I start living our best lives in where? In our work, God starts to minister through you and you become a mouthpiece for your generation. You become someone who is a God changer, a nation mover, someone who can go into a room where everything is happening and everything is and you can make the difference. Yes. Why? Because Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Christ is in you. His spirit is upon you. And if his spirit lives within you, and greater than is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Can you get excited by this? God is at work. Woo! And if God is at work, then that means I need to be a person of work. Yeah. And that means God will give you a sphere of influence in your work. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. By the nature of who you are as a son or daughter of God, do not allow yourself in to get into a mindset that says, oh, this is just what I do for my day job. What is it that you do for your day job? Maybe you're like my wife and you look at the, after the kids or whatever. You're a stay-at-home mum. That's your work. Yeah. And God will use you in your work. It's one of the most high callings to yeah. look after and to nurture and build family. Mm. What a high calling. Mm. But wherever God places you, that's your sphere of operation. Mm. You say, well, Steve, I'm retired now. I don't do work. Well, that's great. But where is God giving you the sphere of influence to have room? Yeah. You know, if you think that retirement is about sitting there doing nothing, what happens? You die. Mm. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Can, can, can we talk? If, if you just sit around, you get up in the morning, you think, okay, I'm going to enjoy the sun, I might potter in my garden, do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. If that's your work, then you're going to die. But what has God called you to? Yes, he calls you to enjoy life and have fellowship and all those things but he has given each one of us an assignment yeah. your work is to do the will of the father him yeah. who yeah. sent yeah. jesus yeah. and that is what we're about in this church amen yeah. and so to just fill in the other side of bruce's story about the flags i was lying in hospital for my second procedure i had the first one about was it 10 weeks ago tomorrow and uh, i had a little bit of a complication in that the fluid was building around my stomach and so the surgeon calls me in every other day and he takes this needle about four inches in and he goes and he sticks it in and then he drains whatever comes out and then he says steve this is a bit like battleships we just have to try again <laughs> And I'm going, ooh, every time this needle goes in. And he was draining between 250 mils up to 1,250 mils every two days. Wow. And, you know, I was just going, oh, man, this is crazy. I can't keep doing this. And I said to Maria, I said, and Maria, was be she has been amazing. Come on, stand up. I want you to thank <laughs> She She was the person who was like my 
woman up. I can't say what she did for me, but it's, it's too embarrassing. But Maria and I have a new level of intimacy. That's all I'm saying. But Maria was the person who looked after me and cared for me in that hospital. She came bought me coffee every day. She sat with me. She talked to me. Anyway, with the surgeon, and he says to me, Steve, the only way we're going to sort this out is to take you back in. And I thought, okay, well, fine. I have faith for this. I'm going to believe that I go back into the theatre, have this quick procedure job done. So they cleared me out, flushed me out, job done. I felt a million dollars. I said to Maria, Maria, where do I get food in this place? <laughs> and uh, and uh, she says, well, they do sandwiches. I said, I don't want to eat sandwiches. I want pizza. I don't want chicken. Pizza and chicken. So she says, well, you can order it in, you know. So on the night of the second surgery, the, the bariatric patient that can't really eat bread and all these things ordered a pizza and chicken. And then I walked downstairs and I collected it from reception, took it up to my room, and I felt a million dollars. I could only eat about one slice, but that was fine. So anyway, the reason I'm telling you this is because the morning after, I woke about 5 a.m. And I woke at 5 a.m. to an open vision. And that's the only way I could describe it. And it was, I believe it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Now, I don't believe it was the cheese from the pizza. <laughs> and I don't believe it was the fact that I was in hospital, probably still on a little bit of something from whatever they gave me while I was under. <laughs> but I knew I had an encounter. And 5 a.m. in the morning, I'm having this, this time of going in and out of consciousness. It's just, just coming to and sleeping and then going back again. And the Holy Spirit starts to speak to me. It says, everything that I started and birthed in crown is about to come into fruition. What I'm going to do is I'm readjusting you. I'm readjusting the church. It's not what you started is wrong. It's not that the vision was wrong. It's not that the values were wrong. It's just that you've got yourself into a program, a system of doing things. How many people know it's so easy to become religious? Yeah. And I think it was Felicity who said this, and this was the word of the Lord that actually you know, you get into a program of doing things and unknown to you, you've suddenly created a religion. Yeah. You've suddenly created a discipline of habits. Yeah. And those things aren't necessarily wrong when you started them because there was purpose behind them. But because you've done it once and you've done it again and you've done it again and you've done it again, it then becomes the same thing that you do and you do it every time. Mm. And suddenly you miss what was life, that was hope, that was the glory of God that was speaking, suddenly just becomes a thing of behavior that you do. Yeah. Yeah. And God started saying to me, I'm going to make you again a house of worship for the nations. I'm going to add to you. I'm going to build you. I'm going to grow you. And this, when I say you, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about you. Because God is enlarging us to be a center of worship for the nations. Amen. We don't have a big band, but we've got an amazing worship pastor. Isn't she lovely? No, you just love her. I, I said, Lord, you've brought Lindsay to us. And we're believing that God is going to do something. But Father, what are you doing here? We're in the upper room. We've only got 65 chairs. And the Lord started speaking to me about huge places of space to be able to worship. He started speaking to me about worship nights where nations would gather. And in the spirit, I saw flags being positioned around the room. And the Lord said, where do you want the people to come from? And I said, well, I don't have many Kenyans. Hey, mercy. <laughs> I don't have many Kenyans yet. And so the Lord would give me a flag for Kenya. And I saw myself going and putting it in a stand on the side. Bruce said to me, where are you going to put them? Are you going to hang them from the ceiling? I said, no, I'm going to put them on poles. Stick them there. <laughs> and as I would put the pole in and put the flag up, suddenly the next week, someone from Kenya came. <laughs> and the Lord said, who do you want now? I said, well, I don't need Uganda. Put Uganda. I need Ghana. I need, uh, I need some European nations as well. I need Denmark. I need yeah. Sweden. And I started putting these flags in the ground. And one by one, week by week, the nations from around here in this greater London area started coming. And musicians of different backgrounds started to play. And I said, Lord, I look at this little stage thing here that we've got. And it's no room. There's no bass out. There's no nothing. We've got no drama, just me. Uh, and I said, I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it bigger. And I suddenly saw this huge area with different things that were there ready for different players, saxophonists and people like this who could join and be added to us. And God started speaking about what he was going to do. And so I said, Lord, what is your strategy to enable us to get into this place of faith? And the Lord said, my strategy is that you build me an altar. 
I said, you what? He said, you build me an altar. And I know what it is to build altars for the Lord in worship in times gone by before. But as we have gathered and we started our church through a word of God that came from Dr. Sharon Stone. Many of you who remember were the first ever gathering that she came to in the Epsom Racecourse. We were going through an interesting time. Stuff had been happening in our old place. And, you know, there was so much division and so much cost that Maria and I had to go through in order to birth that thing. And she stood there and she's this little prophet lady. And I'm sat there and she's looking me eye to eye. She points to me and she says, within six months from today's date, you'll have a church. And then she exposes the whole thing. And I just literally, um, my jaw went, oh, Lord, I don't want a church. <laughs> but God started speaking about what he was going to do. And sure enough, almost six months to the day, some of you were there with us in the Banstead Centre. That's when the church was born. It was birthed out of the presence of God. It was birthed out of values that come from these three areas. The family of God experiencing the presence of God and doing the mission of Jesus together. This is who we are, Crown Family Church. We are to be a people of his presence. And so as we are moving into this new season, you will see some things of programs that we are stripping out. We're going to allow the worship to go on a little bit longer. We're going to catch the flow. If we have to try a song one week, and if it don't work, that's cool with me. You know, we'll try it and see. And if we catch the wave of the presence of God, we're going to ride that wave all the way in. Crash, boom, land. Do you remember when I came back from Sweden? I think it was the last time I was ministering here. I came back from a revival in Stefan Edelfors' church, in each church in Sweden. And I stood up. I was with her father, Jens Garnfeld, and he had just preached, and he had invited me to go there. And I stood up to preach, and I said to them, Revival is here, and revival is now. And as I lifted my hand, suddenly it was like a grenade of the Holy Ghost just went boom. And bodies were everywhere. I'm like, man, this is a bit weird. Lord, this is one of these services where I don't need to do anything. I just need to watch. And have you ever been in those environments where you kind of think, well, the preacher's doing some really strange, weird things here? Well, I kind of was. I was just going, right, Lord, which one? This one? You want this one? Oh, holy spirit took over. We came back on Sunday. I was not due to minister. Mum was due to be preaching. And uh, she said to me, she said, see, I've been looking for the word of God all week and I can't find it. I can't find it. This is a regular occurrence with her. She'd spend a lot of time preparing for her time of ministry. Hours, in fact. Of the, you know you get the nuggets of truth when yeah. she comes and preaches. Yeah. But that takes her hours yeah. of preparation in God. I honor her for that. But, you know, she said to me, I just don't feel I've got it this week. And I said, Mum, don't worry. I've got it. I, don't, I haven't prepared. I don't have a word. But I know that I'm carrying it. I got on the plane, the taxi took forever to come. You know, it was touch and go whether I was even going to make it to the service. Andy remembers I'm calling up at 10.25, but I'm still stuck at to call, keep going. Just get, get them there, I'm going to preach. I got here, managed to somehow do whatever with the worship. And then, uh, and then as I stood up, the glory of God came and his presence filled the place. And this is the thing about obedience. When you speak the word of God, that's when things happen. When you proclaim the word of God, that's where miracles start taking place. We are a church that is to be living in a place of his presence, living in revival. And do you know what that means, friends? It means it starts with you. It starts in the secret place. Can I provoke you and challenge you? When was the last time you got alone with God? And when did you spend time with God to call on him, to ask him to do something fresh and new in your life? I'm not talking about a little read your Bible once a day and I've read my verse. I mean an encounter with the Holy Spirit where he speaks to you personally. Because this is what God wants, that every one of us come with a tongue and interpretation, a psalm, a hymn, a spiritual song. And as we come, we gather together. And out of what God has already spoken, that's where his glory is revealed. That's where his presence comes. Well, I haven't even started preaching what I was going to preach, but that's okay because I've turned it into a series and it's going to happen in due course. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Father, help me. Psalm 34 and verse 1 says this, I will bless the Lord when I'm feeling good. I will bless the Lord when I'm feeling on top of the world. I will bless the Lord when I'm out of a pandemic. No, it doesn't say any of those things. Come on, do you know your Bible? What does it say? All times. I will bless the Lord at all times. 
His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Well, hang on a minute. What happens when you get in your car and you drive down Wellington High Street and that annoying person pulls out in front of you? No, I will bless the Lord at all times. What happens when something terrible happens? What happens when you go through a season of pain, a season of grief, a season of turmoil that happens? I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. You know, I've said this before and I just keep hearing, hearing it from the Spirit of God again and again. That our position of faith is a matter of joy. It's a matter of joy. You know, you can feel unhappy because of life's circumstance, but it will not rob you of your joy. Yeah. Did you hear me? Because joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit that is given to you. You receive the joy of the Lord. You receive the Holy Spirit. You get the package of His fruit. It isn't the fruits of the Spirit. It is fruit singular. You get the fruit of the Holy Spirit and you get all of these things. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All in one package. Some of us think it's a pick and choose menu. Well, today I'm going to have a banana. Today I'm going to have an apple. I might have a bit of mango for lunch. No, it's a package that you get when you receive the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So things can happen in your life. Things can go on in your life that cause you to go through times of volatility, times of turmoil, that God is in you and he will not allow you to be moved if you stand. Did you hear me? Amen. Because you are about the business of God, his fruit is within you and therefore you will not be robbed of your joy. Mm. How do you get the joy of the Lord when you're going through the thick of it? Mm. Praise. Praise. Mm. praise. Mm. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Everyone say praise. Yeah. Praise. praise. Yeah. When we praise him, when we exalt him, we put the magnifying glass on how great he yeah, is yeah. and our problems, our issues, our global pandemic <clears throat> suddenly fade into insignificant in the greatness and magnificence of God. Jesus. Hallelujah. What I'm going through feels so small and insignificant when I look at the greatness of my God. This is who he has called us to be. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, say it with me. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know, I believe that God is going to be changing and shaking us into a people of his presence again. Isaiah 43, 21 says this, this people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Crown family, you are a people that has been formed for the Lord yeah. and you yeah. will declare his praise. Hallelujah. What happens when you praise him? Do you know what happens? When you praise him, the enemy's assignments that are against you, we haven't got time to get into this, but the things and the obstacles that the enemy puts in your way as you praise him, suddenly those things begin to fall away and you begin to start experiencing victory in your life through what? Through the power of praise. It puts everything into perspective. If we're called to be a church that is a church for worship and a church of nations that is going to praise him, and we have to move ourselves out of emotions and into attitude. Out of emotions and into a new attitude. What is the attitude? It's an attitude of gratitude. An attitude of thanksgiving. An attitude that says, no matter what, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. And as I began to meditate on this and see this picture of the flags and everything that the Father spoke to us about what this place would be, the Lord just reminded me again that the upper room that we have here, kind of strange, isn't it, to meet in an office office uh, block like this overlooking the whole of Wallington, Southwest London, Mitchell, all around here. But, you know, God has got us on the move. This is not the end destination. This is a transient place. And I wonder what you would start to dream. In fact, the Holy Spirit said to me, challenge my people to dream bigger. Challenge my people to dream bigger. Because when we get 
from God's perspective that which he wants to do. We start to see things in an in eternal view where we don't just see things through our own mind's eye, but we see things from the perspective yeah. that he is a big, big God. Yeah. And if he is a big, big God, then money don't matter to him. If he's a big, big God, then problems don't matter to him. If he's a big, big God, health problems don't matter to him because he is the healer. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear this today. That if you're going through something, that thing might feel like it's a big thing. But because we serve a big, big God, that thing will fade into insignificance. Because he is the great God. He is the great King. And so we are believing as we transition into everything that the Lord has for us, that we are going to be a people of praise. And so the Lord spoke to me about four things. Praise is recognizing who God is, recognizing who he is. Who is he? He is the great king of all, the king of glory. Hallelujah. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly in Chronicles 29. You can read it verses 10 to 13. Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Can you feel it? He is the great and awesome God. Praise is acknowledging God for all he has done for us. Psalm 25 verse 1 says this, Lord, you are my God. Say that with me. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness you have done wonderful things. Praise is acknowledging God for all that he has done. Point number three, it's a vocal exhortation. You say, well, Steve, I'm not very good at praise. You, you know, you can play the piano, you can play the drums, a bit of guitar, and you can sing and do all those things. But have you heard me sing, my friend? It don't matter what comes out of your mouth, Amen. but it has to come out of your mouth. Amen. It don't matter what the sound is, yes. because it will be beautiful to the Lord, but it has to come out of your mouth. Why? Because there is a sacrifice of praise yes. that takes place. It doesn't happen on an altar that we build at the front. It happens on the altar of your lips. It happens on your lips. And so you have to decree and you have to declare and you have to sing, Doug. Sing, Doug, with everything that you have. Because as you sing, whatever it is, that's where the breakthrough happens. You say, what is it about my voice that's significant? Well, there's nothing significant about your voice. But there is a sacrifice of praise that takes place when you give of yourself through your song. Through your lips. Psalm 34, we've said it already. His praise will what? Continually be in my mouth. Hebrews 13, 15. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually, there it is again, offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Listen to this. The fruit of my lips that openly professes his name. Hallelujah. Literally, that word in the Greek there, the fruit of, it can be translated to be a bull offering of your lips. A sacrifice that was given up where an animal was slain in order for the remission of sin. Now, we know we don't have time to get into blood covenants and things like that. We know that Jesus shed his precious blood in order that we now have direct access into the Holy of Holies. That means that when Jesus died on the cross, the veil that was in the temple that that represented the separation of man from the inner place where God himself resided. What happened when Jesus died? That curtain was torn from top to bottom. Now the tabernacle of God is with them. It's now with you. It's now with me. You and I have direct access. We don't have to go through a high priest or an intermediary anymore. You just have to open up your mouth. You just have to give a song of praise to the Lord. You just have to open up with those words of praise. And suddenly you transition into the Holy Holies. Suddenly you transition into the place where his presence is. Isn't that amazing? We're to be a people of his presence. And that means as you're washing the dishes, Father, I thank you for what you're going to do in my life today. As you're going about his work. What work? My work. What work? Well, the work you do on Monday morning. Your work. 
as you do that work, do it to the best of your ability for the glory of God. Praise is a vocal exaltation to God. Wow, we've got so many more points. I'm not going to do it anymore. Father, Father, we just want to lift up a shout of praise that we'll see the things that are in our lives that are not of you come tumbling down. Those walls that have been built up, walls of pain, walls of regret, walls of shame. Father, this morning, as we look at what it means to be a people of your presence, Lord, we speak to those walls and we ask you to come with the power of your spirit and just breathe your breath to blow those walls down in our lives. Blow them down, Lord, this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak to every mountain. We thank you it melts like wax in the presence of the Lord. Father, I speak over each and every one. Mountains that have been built up through circumstances. Mountains that have been built up through things of patterns of sin, attitudes, things that we've done. Lord, in your presence, the mountain must melt like wax. Now, In the name of Jesus. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, as you move us into this next season, Lord, we're responding in obedience to your word, knowing that you are in the business of shaking us. Shaking us for a reason, for a purpose, that the glory of the Lord would be seen upon us. Let your glory now be seen upon us. And would you just stand? Would you stand? Yes. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you right now for your glory coming upon her. In the name of Jesus. Would you stand? Kiranganda, Becca, would you stand? Kiranganto Kanda, where is the Prime Ministry team? Captain. Captain. Lift your hands. Let the glory of God come now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now breathe upon her. In Jesus' name. Come on, come to the case. She can't have a long for this amount of. You take the most of time. She never can have mercy. Would you stand? Just stand, mercy. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you for her. I thank you for everything that she's been through. The Spirit of the Lord says over you that I have brought you into a season of of, of challenges where you have found yourself unsure about where to be. The reason that you have been in this time, says the Lord, is because I have you on a journey of transition. I have you on a plan of movement, says the Lord. And what I'm doing now is I am activating the things that I have placed in your spirit from years ago. The words that have been over your life from years ago and now coming into fruition, says the Lord. For what I am now doing is I am not making you someone that sits in the background. I'm not making you someone that sits in the shadow, says the Lord. But I am bringing you out as a mouthpiece. You are a mouthpiece, says the Lord, that I have crafted for my glory. So the Lord says, daughter, do not run, do not hide, do not be one of those like Joel who has been hiding around, but enable my spirit to come and breathe life upon you again, says the Lord. For as you do so, you will experience a new liberty and a new lightness in your spirit that will propel you into destiny. Father, I thank you for her. Let your glory come upon her now. Joel, just minister that to her in Jesus' name. Andy, stand up please. Lift your hands, Father. I thank you that the mountains right now are being melted in Andy's life. Father, I thank you and I activate. This is going to be a bit strange, so you'll forgive me later. But I stir it up. I stir up the gift of God now within you in Jesus' name. And I speak to the mountains and I say, go in the name of Jesus. I don't often hit people. Um, but the Spirit of God told me to do that. That's my excuse, Tony. Stand up again. again. Lift your hands, Jesus. Now, blow through the, co- the cobwebs, Lord, and blow them away. 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 Now. 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 More, Lord. More, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jeanette, you're here for a reason this morning. You didn't just come because it was just a nice thing to do on a Sunday, but you're here because God wanted you to be here because He is going to breathe on you 
He's going to breathe on you. You don't have to come forward. Don't worry. Just stand where you are. It's fine. Just receive from the Father. He's going to blow away everything of the old season. He's blowing it away right now. Just receive the love of the Lord right now. Where are you, Maria? Where's Maria? Get Maria, please. Where is my wife? She's not here. Get Maria, where is my wife? She's not here. She's not here. So no one can get just go. That's it. Jesus. Shantanama Sikati and Tolo Kusikate de Masondo. Shantama Sultana Masande. Leba Tolo Kusho Kantanama Sondo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you're in the business of restoration. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the restorer. You are the restorer. You are the restorer. You are the restorer. Kilagata Kedene Sultanama Sakaka. We thank you and we praise you. We thank you and we praise you. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Come on, come in. Yeah, 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 come and stand here. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Father, Father, we thank you right now. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord comes upon me now. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Sharon. Sharon. Sharon, come here and lay your hands on her way. Shalom, also, Tamas, again, the best second time. Hey, Bruce. It's your meeting, my friend. Come on, let's just uh, let's stand for a moment. So it's always one of my desires is that we see breakthrough in church. That we don't just come for a meeting, but actually to encounter the Lord. And uh, I look around and, you know, there's needs, there's issues, different things that we face. The last two years have been really tough in many different ways, financially, work-wise, different things. And uh, I just feel today is a day of breakthrough.
start us in this country between really cold and difficult moments But I pray that times of refreshing come from that he would restore to you the joy that you've known in most years. It's like the winter is over. And he's praying for a fresh look. It's just like the spring comes, the flowers begin to blossom again. The family is restored. We begin to engage with friends and family. And the Lord wants to enhance that and bless that in your life.
And Lord, we just pray that your traveling mercies will go with Dave and Jill this week as they go off on holiday. And every other member of our family that goes off on holiday, that you will be with them. And the rest of this week, Lord, we just pray that the word that has been spoken today rests upon our heart, that we might chew on it, that we might go over it, um, and that we might receive what you have given to us. And so let's just say the grace prayer together as we go out. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore.